How Matak Yippee, my name is Sean Sherman. I am a co-founder of our nonprofit Natives and CEO of my company, The Sioux Chef, based in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I am born and raised on Pine Ridge Reservation and enrolled with the Oglala Lakota Sioux Tribe. At Natives, our two main goals are creating access to indigenous-focused foodways education, along with facilitating indigenous food access to our many indigenous communities across Turtle Island. We run a nonprofit kitchen called Indigenous Food Lab. Our mission with Indigenous Food Lab is to facilitate a lot of indigenous focused curriculum, creating a space for indigenous culinary education and development to be able to do a lot of food relief where necessary. And we're hoping that we can work with tribal communities across Turtle Island to help them to develop more indigenous food operations everywhere. In this series of videos, we're sharing recipes our culinary team at Natives have developed that combine commodity products available through the food distribution program on Indian reservations, which is FDPIR, on top of that utilizing indigenous wild edible foods that we found in our own regions. So if you're in the Midwest or Mountain Plains regions, these recipes are for you. We're hoping that people who have access to the commodity food program will be able to utilize these recipes. On top of that, spending some time outdoors and reconnecting with the nature around them as our ancestors did. We truly believe that bringing more indigenous foods into our kitchen and onto our plates will help with our health and our wellness and our cultural diversity. Pilamae and thank you for joining us. We hope you enjoy these recipes. Hi, my name is Francesca and I work at the Indigenous Food Lab. I am a culinary associate. Hello, my name is Vernon Defoe. I am the culinary program specialist at the Indigenous Food Lab and I am Anishinaabe from Red Cliff, Wisconsin. So today we're going to be making a vegetarian wild rice bowl and we're going to be serving it with an apple berry sauce. For the ingredients today we're going to have vegetable oil, uh, one can of pinto beans, a can of hominy, salt, water, and wild rice. If you don't have wild rice available you can definitely go ahead and sub for any other rice that you do have. Um, if you do have access to like garlic powder definitely go ahead and throw that in there um, but whatever seasonings you want are totally fine. So for the forage ingredients today as well, we're going to have burdock roots. We're going to be using milkweed uh, shoots or pods. Shoots you can harvest in early like springtime, and then the pods that come with the plant as well are also edible, but those will be harvested more in the summer. Um, this also does have a milky sap that comes with it, so you are going to want to cook this thoroughly first before you do eat it. We are going to be talking about that a little bit more further down in the video, and we are adding them and cooking them just to explain about that as well. Um, and we're also going to have purslane and lamb's quarter. So for purslane, and it usually grows a lot in our backyards here, um, so if you have access to it, definitely go ahead and use this. If you don't, feel free to use any other leafy green that you may have. It's totally fine for this recipe. This one does have a bit of a look-alike. Um, it's called spotted spurge, so that one is not edible. The purslane leaves are going to be more succulent in texture, while the spotted spurge is going to be thin. So that's in a way to tell them apart. If you do have them available to you, um, wild onions are another one of the great foraged ingredients to add to that. We don't have any here today because they're just not growing around our area right now, um, but if you are able to come across them, definitely add them today. Or you can sub uh, any other onion that you have. And for the lamb's quarter and purslane as well, if you don't have access to those, feel free to go ahead and use any other like greens that you have available to you, and that should be totally fine in the recipe as well. And for the apple berry sauce, we're going to have blueberries, applesauce, and some water. But you can also sub any berries that you like. All right, for the equipment that we're going to be using today, we are going to need one large pot of boiling water to blanch the greens in. Uh, one medium saucepan to cook the wild rice in, a frying pan with a uh, spatula, I like wooden spatulas, um, for sauteing, another small saucepan for the berry sauce, and then a large bowl with a slotted spoon that we will be filling with ice and cold water to cool the blanched greens in, and a couple of measuring spoons and a couple of measuring cups for measuring stuff out and access to a range. All of the parts of the milkweed are edible. Um, we are going to be blanching it first, which is basically just cooking it in hot water. That'll help 
break down the milky sap compounds that are in the plants. It kind of is like a defense of the plant and only like monarch butterflies are actually able to take that and if animals, predators eat them, then they get poisoned by it. <laughs> so it's kind of just that nice defense of it, but it can be cooked out and um, edible for people. So that's kind of what we're gonna do here. If they're not fully cooked, um, it can cause um, indigestion in some people, especially if you're more sensitive. So also with this, before you even try to eat these, I would definitely recommend just tasting a little bit and then seeing how your body might react. And if you don't feel anything and it feels good, then go ahead and continue. Milkweed also does have some health benefits to it too. It does have anti-inflammatory um, compounds and it also can be um, supportive to your respiratory health. For the blanching process, we're gonna, I just like to tear the leaves off like so. You can chop them or do however you like. Since these are just the shoots and the leaves, they only need about 30 seconds to blanch in the hot water. So, but when you get the pods, if you happen to harvest those, those are gonna be needing to be blanched for about two to three minutes. All right, so this, I'm gonna go ahead and add to this here. So all we have to do is drop it in. And what I like to do um, is just go ahead and push it down a little bit. You just wanna make sure it's fully covered in the boiling water. And we're just gonna let it cook down for just about 30 seconds here. And if you do have the green pods and decide to use that, that is going to be the longer cook time for the two to three minutes, just kind of like we spoke about earlier. I just want to make sure everyone knows that, so that way we don't have any upset tummies here. But don't be scared. This is actually really good, and it does have a lot of health benefits too, so I would definitely encourage um, you to give it a shot. All right, so that's been about 30 seconds, so we're going to go ahead and remove it. So here we go. I just want to drain a little bit of that hot water so I don't bring it with me. Just dump it in. It does turn the boiling water really pretty green, though. I like that. Okay. And then with this, I just want to kind of make sure it's fully immersed in there, so I am just spreading it around just a little bit. All right, and so uh, you can go ahead and set it aside, and we're going to get the other ingredients um, set up and ready for the recipe. For the process for cooking wild rice, um, a lot of people seem to kind of be intimidated by it, but really it's really simple to do. Um, so the ratio for wild rice is about one cup of wild rice to three to four cups of water. As if the grains are really thin, it should cook within 10 to 15 minutes. Other rices, if they're thicker, they're gonna take more time. You just get a pot of boiling water and you just dump it in the water. And then once it gets to the consistency you like, you just drain it. Wild rice is very important to uh, the tribes that live around the Great Lakes, that's where it grows. It's been a staple for thousands of years for people. Um, you harvest it in the late summer, early fall time, usually at the end of August. It's a very laborious process. Um, there's lots of bugs involved. Um, but basically you go out on a canoe and somebody is pushing the canoe and you take two sticks and you pull the grains in and kind of knock them. Um, on each side and it puts the rice in there. Um, and then after that, you parch the rice to get the hulls off. And that's a pretty laborious process in itself. Very difficult to harvest, very simple to cook. Some of the health benefits to wild rice is that they're very high in, in soluble and insoluble fiber. It's very rich in minerals, uh, very high in vitamin B, which is good for promotion of good digestion heart, and just your overall health. So wild rice isn't really actually a, a rice per se. Uh, it is a complex carbohydrate, whereas brown rice or white rice is a simple carbohydrate. So the, the ratio of water or the cooking time is not that sensitive. It's just kind of like boiling potatoes or so. When, you know, you just boil it in an amount of water until it's to the consistency you like, and then you strain it and cool it. All right, let's check the rice. You basically just kind of cook it until it's soft, um, and which you could either do it by feel, or if you want, just taste a little bit, kind of like sp spaghetti noodles in a way. Now that it's done, we are going to strain it. We're just gonna dump it back in the pot here. I always make sure that I try to scrape every last grain, thinking about how hard the harvesting is and thinking about the history of the grain. Try to get every little piece you can and then just set it aside and we'll continue on to the next ingredient. 
we're going to go ahead and make our appleberry sauce. Um, this is based off of a traditional uh, Wajafi uh, recipe, um, which normally is going to include the choke cherries traditionally. Yeah, so the sauce kind of comes from the, the Plains tribes. Generally what they put in it is choke cherries and or buffalo berries or other types of berries from the Plains area. It's really good just putting on like your roasted meats, you can put it on your roasted vegetables, um, even contain it to like a salad dressing. All right, so we'll start the appleberry sauce. Um, we're gonna use blueberries today and applesauce. Any berries you have on hand to you are totally fine to use. Um, they're very high in antioxidants and vitamin C. And you only need just a little bit of water, just enough to keep it from not scorching. There's a lot of liquid in here, but we'll just add a little bit in there anyways. And you just kind of let this simmer until the berries get soft. Usually it takes about 10 minutes, but basically you just kind of want to cook it until the berries are incorporated with the, the applesauce um, and soft so that they're easy to smash if you want to. Cook it on like a, a medium, medium low heat. And the biggest thing you want to do though is just keep an eye on it and scrape the bottom to make sure that it's not scorching on the bottom. So while the wajafi is cooking here, we're going to go ahead and begin starting to um, dice our other ingredients. So with burdock root, it can be difficult to pull up out of the ground. Um, you definitely want to wait until about the second year to harvest because they are going to take a lot of digging, but they're definitely completely worth it. So I just have the little ends. They're a little bit rough on the edge, but that's okay. If you want, you can discard these and give them back to the earth as well. But I usually like just to keep some of these so I can make um, tea out of it. And it can be really good if you have like, there's anger issues or moodiness or things like that. And then drinking a daily decoction um, can be really beneficial for those things. So here we do have a little bit of these on the end, which is just part of the root. You can just go ahead and remove those. It's no big deal having these here. Um, you don't need to peel it because the root skin here is actually has a lot of beneficial um, health benefits. Here, I'm just gonna go ahead and chop it in half to get started. You can just dice it however you like. Matchsticks would be something similar to like this. I'm just gonna go ahead and dice it across because that is kind of just how I like to do it. But they are also have a lot of other health benefits. Uh, they're high in antioxidants, which can help reduce inflammation in your body. Um, they're a cancer inhibitor, prohibiting cancer cell growth. So it's a good preventative measure, and they also have a lot of prebiotic fiber. So really good for your digestive tract too. If you have issues with that, um, they can help make that move a lot smoother. And they are very beneficial for your immune system too. So lots of reasons, I think, to just incorporate this into your daily diet if you're able. Okay, so now that we have this all diced, um, I was gonna say, like, for burdock root, if people don't have access to it, is there anything else you would recommend? Yeah, well, since it's a root, you know, it kind of has a flavor like sunchokes, which is a, a, something that grows in the plains areas a lot. Um, those can also be hard to find, so then I would just recommend, like, maybe a parsnip or even a carrot or oh, nice. turnips or potatoes, anything that's a tuber or a, a root, basically. Um, if you don't have access to wild onions, just because we couldn't find any in our area, um, we're going to go ahead and just use this white onion, which is totally fine. You can sub any onion that you may have on hand and available to you. I'm going to go ahead and dice these, just chop the ends off here. And for the wild onions, they're definitely high in antioxidants, but they can also help reduce inflammation, again, with burdock as well, as well as promoting heart health, too, for the body. So lots of good benefits here. So these, we're just gonna go ahead and give them a chop. I think we just need about three-fourths of a cup, so we'll see how we are here. All right, so now that we have our burdock and our onion prepped, we're gonna go ahead and open the cans of the pinto beans and the hominy here, and then we're gonna go ahead and drain them and get them ready to add to the recipe as well. All right, looks like our berry sauce is about ready here. So you can either set it aside or you can just set it at a very low temp just to kind of keep it warm on the stove and until the rest of our ingredients are cooked. Now we're getting ready to saute the burdock and the onions. Um, you want to get your pan 
to about a medium heat. And one good way of telling if the pan is ready is if you just take a little tiny bit of water and obviously it's hot. So we will start. Uh, first, we want to put the oil down. Get that kind of evenly coated on the bottom. And then we will add the burdock. And then the onion. It already smells good. Yeah. <laughs> Onions cooking always smells good. Yeah. Also the burdock smells yeah, good too. I like to season my onions and whatever else. I'll just put a little, little pinch of salt in there. And basically you want to cook these until everything is tender. Again, you can cook it as long as you want. Like if you really like soft caramelized onions, you can caramelize them down. The onions will start to get a little translucent. Use your spatula to move everything around so it doesn't scorch and everything gets evenly cooked. Give it a little shake to let it cover more surface area. You can tell when the burdock root is done. You can just kind of press it with your spatula and if it seems to kind of mush it pretty easily, it's, it's probably good. Now that these are getting pretty soft, we'll add the beans and the hominy. Wanted to start with this just because the beans and the hominy are already pretty soft. Um, so get everything kind of the same consistency. So now we'll toss in the beans. Put the rest of the salt in. And then again, we were, we're using garlic powder, but you can use any spice you want. Um, most people love garlic. And you just kind of just get all the seasonings evenly incorporated in with the beans, hominy, burdock, and onions. And at this point, you're just basically heating the beans and the hominy up. And once it gets to that point, then we're ready to move on to the next part. All right, now we're going to cut up the milkweed and add it to the wild rice. And then I'm going to separate the shoots from the leaves because they kind of have different textures. We'll put the wild rice in. We're going to just put a little bit of water in here to prevent anything, any scorching and get that going. Basically, we're just going to be reheating the rice and heating up the milkweed. Just start putting it in there. And these leaves you can, again, depending on your preference, you could leave them really big and chunky um, or you can cut them really fine. So I'm just going to kind of rough chop it. I like chunky greens. Maybe go in half so you get some kind of decent sized chunks. And just throw this all in here and then just start incorporating it. So since we added the milkweed um, leaves and the shoots to the wild rice, we're going to go ahead and just continue to cook it for a little while. Um, we did have the blanching process where we heated it in the hot water for 30 seconds, but that is not the full cooking process. So we're still going to want to have it in here at least for another, like, I think like three to five minutes just to really make sure that it is fully cooked. All right, now we're going to start plating this. So go ahead and take some wild rice and milkweed. So now we're going to do the beans, hominy, burdock, and onion mix, and a little bit of the wojapi sauce. Now we're going to garnish the dish with some fresh lamb's quarter, mm -hmm. raw, and some purslane. What are some of the medicinal properties of lamb's quarter? Um, so lamb's quarter, um, pretty much the entire thing is edible, and it can be harvested in early spring uh, through the first frost. Um, it's really high in vitamin C and vitamin A, so it's really good for supporting your immunity as well as um, eye health. It's high in fiber too, um, and it is rich in a lot of uh, minerals, so it's really good for your bone health as well. And how about purslane? Purslane is another one um, that is really good and has a lot of similar um, health benefits as lamb's quarter does. And it is 
like we said earlier, has like succulent leaves, um, which are the only ones that eat part of the plant that you do want to eat, it's just the leaves. So it is also high in vitamin C and vitamin A, so it's really good to help support the immune, your immune system as well as your eye health, and it is rich in minerals as well, um, so it also contributes to supporting bone health too. Here is our vegetarian wild rice bowl. With this dish, it's best to serve it warm or hot. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're happy to be able to share this with you. And we just hope that this can help inspire you to incorporate other indigenous ingredients into your daily meals. Thank you.